Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Italian city of Pisa witnessed the official opening of the World Endurance Championship, which will be held Saturday with the participation of the Royal Endurance Team, led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Royal Endurance Team Captain, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. 80 competitors from 32 countries will be vying top spots at the prestigious championship. His Honor Sheikh Nasser underscored that the participation of the Royal Endurance Team in the world's largest endurance tournaments affirms the team's high skill level, adding that it is in line with his vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in utilizing the sports to enhance the economic vision of 2030 for Bahrain. His Honor stated that seeing Bahrain's flag at the opening ceremony is a source of pride and the strong presence of the kingdom in all major sporting events. His Highness praised the segments of the opening ceremony which embody the cohesion of the teams participating in the tournament and their eagerness to be present at the ceremony and wish success to the royal team in this championship. The royal team participated in the opening ceremony of the championship where royal team members Abdurrahman Al Zayed raised the flag of the Kingdom of Bahrain during the event that was held in the city of Pisa in the presence of officials of the International Equestrian Federation. Due to the corona pandemic precautionary measures, the opening ceremony was held in a public square in the Italian city, and the royal team was represented by Abdurrahman Zayed. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, chaired the Government Executive Committee meeting number 381, which was held virtually. The meeting discussed the latest developments in dealing with the corona pandemic and approved the recommendations that have been raised by the national medical team. Bahrain has welcomed the ceasefire between the State of Israel and the Palestinian factions in the Gaza Strip following the success of the efforts of Egypt in leading negotiations between both parties to reach a long-term ceasefire in order to end the military operations in the Gaza Strip. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs commended the effective joint international efforts to stop the military operations between both sides to prevent the destructive operations in preparation for political negotiations to restore security and stability and work to deliver humanitarian aid and relief supplies to the residents of the Gaza Strip. The Ministry stressed the importance of continuing international efforts to resolve the Palestinian issue based on the two-state solution in accordance with the international legitimacy resolutions and to establish lasting peace in the Middle East. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Asumi, praised the Egyptian efforts led by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to reach a ceasefire between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Al Asumi stressed that the great Egyptian efforts that were made to establish a ceasefire reflect in all sincerity the firmness of the Egyptian position on the Palestinian issue and the need to find a just solution to the cause that would lead to the establishment of a Palestinian independent state in accordance with the international legitimacy decisions. The President of the Arab Parliament affirmed that Egypt's success reflects its regional leadership, pivotal role and keenness to restore security and stability in the entire region. The Kingdom of Bahrain participated for the sixth time in the 17th International Architecture Exhibition in Venice, Italy, through a national pavilion bearing the slogan in Muharraq, which was inaugurated by the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. On this occasion, Sheikh Hamay stated that despite the circumstances imposed by the corona pandemic, the authority was determined to continue the cultural work and transfer the most beautiful image of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the world by presenting its cultural and urban components and highlighting one of its most important sites registered on the UNESCO World Heritage List, which is the path 
of the Pearls. That was dedicated to a motto of the authorities' activity this year. She added that the culture is a hope for all countries of the world to recover and advance towards the future by sharing human experiences. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference on Thursday to provide an update on the Kingdom's COVID-19 response. Based on updated medical statistics and following an approval from the government's executive committee, the task force announced the following decisions to take place effective from today, the 21st of May, until the 3rd of June. The decisions are Entry to shopping malls will be restricted to individuals aged 18 and above who are vaccinated and have completed 14 days after the second dose and to those who have recovered from the COVID-19. Proof of both must be provided by presenting the Green Shield via the Be Aware application. Entry to shops, with the exception of supermarkets, banks, pharmacies and hospitals, will be restricted to individuals aged 18 and above who are vaccinated and have completed 14 days after the second dose and to those who have recovered from the virus. Proof of both must be provided by presenting the Green Shield via the Be Aware application. Limiting indoor services such as restaurants, cinemas, saloons and others to individuals aged 18 and above who are vaccinated or have recovered from the virus. Proof of both must be provided by presenting the Green Shield through the Be Aware application. Limiting entrance to service centers and government offices to individuals aged 18 and above who are vaccinated and have completed 14 days after the second dose and to those who have recovered. Proof of both must be provided by presenting the Green Shield through the Be Aware application. Limiting private gatherings to a maximum of only six individuals. Moreover, additional measures have been introduced for passengers arriving from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Nepal, including entry into the kingdom is restricted to holders of residence visas from these countries. Passengers arriving from the aforementioned countries must quarantine for 10 days. All arrivals from the mentioned countries are required to present a certificate confirming the result of a negative PCR test containing a QR code, no more than 48 hours before their arrival. All arrivals must conduct a PCR test upon arrival. A second PCR test for arrivals who will stay in Bahrain for a period of more than five days and a third PCR test 10 days after the date of arrival for those who will reside in Bahrain for a period of more than 10 days. The Under Secretary at the Ministry of Health and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Walid al Mana, noted that it is everyone's responsibility to adhere to all the precautionary measures. He emphasized the dire consequences of complacency. He added that it is also indicated that the highest prevalence of the cases was due to transmission within the community, rather than outside. For his part, the infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the Bahrain Defense Force Hospital and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al qahtani highlighted that out of 206,000 cases that have been registered since the first detection of COVID-19 case in Bahrain, 94% are among those who are not vaccinated and the percentage of those who were vaccinated was only 6%. He underscored the importance of receiving a vaccine, adding that all vaccines in the kingdom are safe and effective. He also highlighted that Bahrain has now provided vaccination for those aged 12 to 17. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila As-Salman, concluded by highlighting that complacency had been responsible for the recent rise in infections, adding that frontline workers continue to ensure the health of all and that everyone remains safe. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments announced limiting access to mosques to worshippers who have received the COVID-19 vaccine and those who have recovered from the virus by showing the green logo in the Be Aware app. This is based on the decision of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and after coordination with the Sunni and Jafari endowments. The ministry added that access 
will be restricted to people who are over 18 years old, stressing the need to strictly comply with the precautionary measures that were announced earlier. The new measures will take effect as of today, Friday, May the 21st. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 868,121 individuals received first dose of the vaccine, while 663,479 received the second dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 18,544 with 1,466 recoveries. 2,415 were registered new cases. 796 of the new registered cases are expatriates. 1,608 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel related. The Ministry announced seven deaths today due to the COVID-19 and expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urged everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus.